Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we are going to implement the reducer logic for the all courses loaded action and we are also going to refactor our effect to only load the courses if it's needed, if the courses are not yet present in the store. Let's then start implementing the reducer for all courses loaded. We are going to switch here to the reducer file and we are going to add here another case clause for the action type all courses loaded. Again, we are going to be using our adapter to load all the entities in the store. So we are going to do an add all call. This add all call is going to replace any entities that were present in the store with this new list that we are about to retrieve from the payload. So we can call action.payload.courses and with this we have passed in here the complete list of courses to the store. Let's now return the result of calling add all. As usual, the call to the adapter will return us the new course state that is going to be saved in the store. With this in place, let's now try the new lowered courses feature. We're going to switch here to a larger window and we're going to go ahead and reload our application. Let's have a look here at the state. So we are going to choose here the tree view of the state and we're going to have a look at the content of the store. And as you can see, we already have here all the courses filled in in memory. The problem is if we navigate through our application and for example, if we hit here the back button back to the courses page, we're going to see that we have triggered again here the action that is going to fetch the same data again from the backend. So this implementation is not yet much better than what we had before. We are still continuously hitting the server, fetching again and again the same data. Let's improve this. We are going to lower the data only once the first time that we need it. From there on, we will keep it in the store and we will no longer have to fetch it again from the server. This is going to reduce a lot the network requests that we are doing because take a look, we are here calling the backend continuously. So if I navigate here to another course and I hit back, we can see that we have again called slash API slash courses and we have returned here again the same list of courses. Let's then go back to the drawing board and see how we are going to fix this. So we still want to have here the all courses requested action that the component should dispatch each time. But here in our effect, we want to call the backend conditionally only if the data has not been loaded. Now the question is, how are we going to determine if the data has been loaded or not? Well, one thing would be to query the store and have a look here at the state inside the store and see if the courses entity contains any data. The problem is we would not be able to distinguish this case from the case where our application has already fetched the list from the backend, but the list just happened to be empty and there were no courses yet in our platform. So in order to distinguish between those two cases, we are going to need to add some extra state here to our store. Let's remember that the entity state that we have here contains an array of IDs and a map of entities. We would like to add here a little bit of extra state to the courses feature state. We want to add here a flag and we are going to call it all courses loaded. That is going to be true or false depending on if we have already attempted to lower the course list or not. This flag should be initially false. So going back here to our application, this means that our courses state will no longer simply be of type entity state. We're going to add here an extra Boolean flag. We are going to call it all courses loaded. And this will be of type Boolean. Now you will notice here that the initial courses state is no longer an instance of courses state. And we are getting here a compilation error. In order to fix this compilation error, we need to provide here the initial value for this flag. And we can do so via this parameter object here. So let's go ahead and define that all courses loaded is initially false. 
So this way, our store will know that we have not yet attempted to fetch the list from the backend. And in that case, we are going to go ahead and trigger this request. Now that we have added the all courses loaded flag to the store, let's refactor our effect in order to use it. The first thing that we are going to need to do is to query the store to see if this flag has been filled in or not. And we need to do that before doing the call to the backend. So somewhere here, we need to query the store, check the value of the flag, and depending on the value, trigger or not this backend request. In order to be able to query the store, we're going to be needing a selector. So let's implement it first. We're going to call it, like the name of the variable, the all courses loaded selector. We're going to call create selector and we're going to pass in here as the first argument, the feature state. This contains the complete state of the course's entity. Now let's implement the projector function. The projector function will give us access to the complete state, meaning the IDs, the entities, and also the all courses loaded extra state flag. Now we have a flag in the store saying if the courses were loaded or not. So let's then use it to write our effect. So the first thing that we're going to need is to inject the store here because we are going to need to query it. Now that we have the store, here is what we want to do. We want to combine the result of this observable here, which contains the action of type all courses requested with another observable that contains the result of querying the store. So we can combine the two latest values of two observables using the with latest from operator. So the first observable that we are combining is this one. This is going to be the action observable of type all courses requested. And the second observable is going to be a query to the store. As usual, we are going to query the store using the select operator. And let's pass it the all courses loaded selector that we have just defined. So now we are going to get here a combined observable with the results of both these observables. We want to filter out this observable and make sure that we only trigger the request if the courses are not loaded. So let's see how we are going to implement this. First, we are going to add here a tuple variable which contains the result of the first observable, which is the action, and the result of the second observable, which is the query to see if all the courses are already loaded. And this variable here is a boolean that is going to tell us if this request was already made or not. So we want to filter out the case when the request has already been made. So this merge map here will only be called if the all courses loaded flag is still set to false. If this variable is already populated to true, then this filter condition here is going to prevent that a new request to the backend is made. What we need to do now to finish this implementation is to set all courses loaded to true whenever the courses are first loaded. Let's then implement that here in our reducer, here in the case clause for all courses loaded. So here we no longer want to simply add the courses to the state, but we also want to modify this flag. And we can do that in the following way by using here this second argument pass to add all. We are going to pass in here a copy of the state that we have here and we are going to pass in here an extra property, all courses loaded, that we are going to be setting to true. So with this, whenever we dispatch this action to the store, all courses loaded, we also set the flag to true and that will prevent the backend from being called again due to the filter condition. And with this, we have completed the implementation of our effect. Let's now switch to a larger window and see everything in action. We're going to go ahead and refresh here the courses page and keep an eye here on the action log. So as before, we have loaded all the courses from the backend. So now all this data is coming from the store and not directly from the backend. If we have a look here at the state, we can see that indeed all the courses are still being populated. But now take a look, all courses loaded is now set to true. 
And this means that if we start navigating here in our application, for example, going to view course and back, we are going to see that we have not triggered again the courses API, all courses loaded action. So this means that a new request was not made to the backend. Let's confirm this here in the network tab. Let's see, we only have here one initial call to slash API slash courses. If we now navigate here in our application, and we hit back, we can see that no extra request is being made this time around, fetching again the courses. So all this data that we see here in the list of courses, this is continuously being fetched from the in-memory store and not from the backend, giving the user a much better user experience.